Supreme Chancellor Obi-Wan Kenobi by Stone Free. Chapter 61. Mace gets Quinlan's news. Mace Windu sits down in one of the reading rooms of the Temple Library to catch up on the investigation into the bombing of the Senate. While he knows that he will soon have to ship out with his fleet again, he likes to keep himself updated on important occurrences. And as a member of the Council, it's his duty to stay on top of things that affect his fellow Jedi. He skims over the report from Knight Shiana. Her psychometry so far has not been able to give any conclusive information beyond the yellow skin tone of the person who placed the bombs, which suggests a non-human race, likely a Twi'lek, Togruta, or Zebrak. He nods to himself. It's not much to go on, but if they end up finding several possible candidates, it will help them narrow it down to find the true culprit. Even so... Mace sighs a bit and pinches the bridge of his nose to stave off a headache. Knight Voss would have been a good fit for the investigation, but he was off Coruscant on a mission when it started, so he was put on the duty of going into the Coruscant underworld to see if he could find any information about the bombing. Once he got back from his mission, of course. They're spread so thin, it's a minor miracle. Voss was just finishing up a mission and quickly capable of taking another, but they can't continue like this for much longer. Back-to-back -back missions are no one's friend and dangerous for everyone, but needs must. Turning back to the report, Mace tries not to let their unfortunate circumstances distract him for too long. He has too much to do to spend too much time brooding. It will have to wait until he has time to meditate and sort through his feelings properly. For now, he must put it aside and focus on other topics. Knight Mna writes that the bombs were built on a linchpin model, where one had a timer, and as soon as that went off, the signal went from the first bomb to the others. They all blew up at the same time. Nate pauses. A timer? That's imprecise when it comes to victim surety. Setting a bomb on a timer means anything unforeseen can end up making the plan fail. After all, if the intended victim just happens to leave the room for a trip to the bathroom, they would be spared from being directly in the blast. An imprecise method used in an assassination attempt on a Republic senator that just happens to catch the Supreme Chancellor in the blast as well. An amazing coincidence, and just a little bit too coincidental somehow. Miss frowns. Something about it doesn't fit, and Mace doesn't like it at all. He has no proof of something being wrong, but his feelings tell him that something is wrong about it. Something does not add up, all things considered. There is something more to this than what is apparent at first glance. Mace is sure of it, though he has no evidence to back it up. The investigations of the epicenter isn't finished yet, so drawing conclusions will have to wait lest they risk being too hasty and making incorrect assumptions about what happened. He puts the data pad down on the table to bring up some other reports from the gar when his calm starts beeping. Mace frowns deeper and picks it up from its place on the table. The number comes up as one of the encrypted undercover calm numbers the Order employs. Who in the core worlds could it be? Mace isn't expecting any report from an undercover operative. Unless... Voss cannot have found anything already yet, can he? It seems preposterous, but perhaps... Sighing, Mace accepts the voice only calm. Yes. While he'd like to identify himself further, the call comes from an undercover calm, and protocol is to do everything to avoid potentially blowing the cover of the person on the other end, so rude greeting it is. Boss Louis is me, Van. Boss's voice comes through clearly, clearly enough that Mace can hear slight hesitance beneath the confidence in it. Suspicious. Why are you calling Night Vaughn? Mace goes along with Voss's chosen code name without even really thinking about it. Years of experience with working with undercover operatives and diplomats from worlds with languages Mace's tongue cannot accurately pronounce has long since taught him to use whatever name he is given for someone. Well, but well, Voss draws out the sound almost stalling for time. I'll find the bomb up. Mace blinks in check. Already? By the voice, how? That is far faster than Mace could even have dreamed. He pauses. 
boss doesn't sound excited or smug. Mace has a hunch of why, and with it he feels a headache coming on. Dead, I presume. Just like the other two, gives more credence to the thought that Obi-Wan was the true target prover. Now, of course, they will have to find proof if they're to take the mastermind to trial and ensure that they get like that. Yup. Voss pops the last sound. Um, uh, he hesitates and Mace narrows his eyes. The Sith Lord did it. Like ice bits thrown inside his tunic, Mace feels shivers run down his spine. The Sith Lord. On Gorazant! And they haven't felt him! Even as the Force has lightened, it's still too darkened and muddled for them to even be close to seeing clearly. That much has become very obvious. You're sure? Please, no! Felt it, yeah. And the assassin was killed from afar with a broken neck, with no visible bruising from hands or anything like it. So, how to be the Force there? Sith spit! Topical curse, but hardly appropriate. Deep breaths. In, out. In, out. In, out. So we have a dead assassin killed by the Sith Lord on Coruscant, without us knowing the Sith Lord was here at all. Do you have any other bad news for me, or is that all? Complete silence, but soon he can hear someone moving around from the other end of the comm. Is Voss not alone? The assassin is from a well-known assassin's guild, and uh, they were looking for her rather desperately. Mace closes his eyes. Blessed it. What did you do? Well, I needed someone to start. I'm good, but even I can't find someone when they could be anywhere on a planet the size of Coruscant, and I don't know who they are, so... One of the other assassins tagged along. Ah, so he has an assassin with him at this moment. Well, good thing Mace followed the protocol then. Mace rubs his forehead, trying to decide what to say. It's far from ideal, but he has no doubt that Voss did it out of necessity. For all that his attitude to most things is laid back, he would not jeopardize something as important as this. Thus, Mace will trust his judgment call in this situation, unless a time comes where it becomes clear that it was a mistake. I see. Stall for time until you have something proper to say, or until Voss keeps talking to fill the silence, really. Whoever we're dealing with, they're good. They used a trail of scramblers to throw off the tracking device the assassin was wearing to get her along with her backup. And they managed to not only stop a dead drop, they also blocked out her distress signal. We've been able to confirm that the distress signal was activated on her part, even if her backup never received the signal. While Mace had little hope of their target being incompetent, it's still slightly disheartening. With the state of the galaxy as it is, is a bit of ease on their path through life. That much to ask for. Even though this is once in a while. He shakes his head ruefully. Nothing worth pondering or focusing on. Life is as the Force wills it, and the galaxy proceeds as it will. The stream of time will continue on no matter how they feel about it, and the only thing they can do is try to move with it unless they need to try and change the direction of its flow. Unfortunate. Kept meticulous records of everything, including all the scans and pictures of the surrounding area and the body in its current state. Even if we get an investigation squad out to your position as quickly as possible, it's better if we have as much of it already documented as possible to avoid any information being lost. As you say, Master. Boss agrees before he mumbles something to whoever is with him. Anyway, Law, that's the assassin who tagged along, told me something very interesting. The dead assassin, Daisha, managed to shoot her assailant with a custom blaster, which emits nanomachines that can be used as an identifier. And since nothing in this place is reacting to the machine, it's clear that our dead assassin didn't miss a shot. Is his thoughts going to a halt? Which means the Sith Lord was hit by this traceable blast. He breathes, barely able to believe it. If it wasn't for the fact that Mace Windu does not believe in luck, like most Jedi, he's almost tempted to do so at this moment. Go to him more, Master Way. It is, however, too easy. What exactly does the assassin get out of this? What's the couch, Van? Mace stops himself from sighing. It would look less than ideal to do so when he knows this lag can hear him. There's no point in making an enemy out of her when they need her help moving forward. Well... 
So far, in return for being given a tracking machine set to Daisha's blast on nano machines, Null has requested being let in on who the culprit is, possibly being there at the time of arrest and immunity from persecution during the ongoing investigation. Interesting. For herself or her entire guilt. For myself, Master Wei, an unknown voice suddenly cuts in. La, I'm well aware that you Jedi cannot promise me immunity for my entire guild. You know us as criminals, and while you are not the regular police forces, as peacekeepers, you ran hand criminals into the justice system, even if you don't have any proof of any crimes, of course. Mace suppresses a snort. Of course not. So, would you help out in the investigation, give us this identification tool, and as much information as you can regarding your associates' movements? In return for not being arrested and allowed to leave at the end of it, but with no protection or immunity after that. A sudden thought strikes him. And no immunity from being arrested by someone else if you are caught for any crimes during the investigation. Last snorts. Yes, I wasn't expecting much else from you, and don't worry about me getting caught and prosecuted. I've done nothing wrong for such a worry. I'm merely asking, since I'm acquainted with Daisha, who... Well, we all know what she did. And if we find out you were in part responsible for the bombing during the investigation, Mace cannot help but press her, then our deal will be null and void and you may arrest me. Confident. So either she is innocent and without involvement in this particular crime, or she believes she's covered her tracks well enough for it to matter. Very well. We will have to discuss it with the council before I can get back to you with a definite answer. So please do the stay with Vaughn. I'll make sure the two of you can get in contact at a later time once we've reached a decision. Of course. Shuffling noises on the other end of the Congo. I'll be contacting she regarding my current coordinates, since this is now part of her investigation as well. Voss says clearly not planning on wasting any time with the investigation regardless of the outcome of this deal. Good. Very good. I will contact you once I've discussed the deal with the council. May the force be with you. And also with you, master. The call ends and Mace stares at his comm unit. Is he really considering striking a deal with an assassin from the galaxy's underworld? Would any court in the Republic find evidence gathered with her help admissible in court? The Sith Lord. He nearly forgot. This is not just a bounty hunter to be brought to justice. This is the Sith Lord. Mace has little hope for a peaceful resolution with a Sith. Odds are it will come down to a battle and no telling how many lives will be lost in the meantime. He'll discuss it with the Council. This may be their only chance to truly be able to ascertain the identity of the Sith Lord, as they seem capable of hiding their Force presence. Two wrongs do not make a right, and it is very possible that this La has committed an untold amount of crimes and will continue to do so after a partnership with the Jedi has ended. But they have no evidence against her, so they have no basis to arrest her except suspicion of collusion with a bomber, and even then they have no proof beyond that they know each other and by word of mouth belong to the same guild. He really needs to speak with the council. This is not a decision Mace can make on his own. He put just the bridge of his nose and breathes in and out deeply. If things continue to go down this road of complications, even as the war continues to rage, he's not sure there's enough time in the world for him to sort it all out through meditation. He leans back in his chair and rests both arms on his lap. Sith spit.